Hello, I'm Brian Johnson. And today, we're gonna use the Clarice Pal to do an ultrasound guided peripheral IV. So, first you have your patient. You wanna place the tourniquet as high up in the axle as possible, because as I'll show, you're really gonna be scanning up and down the arm to find the optimal place for venous cannulation. So you're gonna take your Pal, you're gonna do venous setting, and I actually have it fairly deep initially. What I do is I start in the antecubital fossa. And it's really deep. But what I do is I see typically the vein that sits in the antecubital fossa way up top. And I'm actually gonna decrease that depth a little bit. And we can follow that vein. And it's kind of going lateral. That vein's going lateral. And it's actually sitting nice and round and linear. That's a potential vein I would like to cannulate. We'll get back to that one soon. The other place you can look is you go medial. So you kind of follow that vein or other veins into the medial structures. And we're seeing some vessels. We're seeing some vessels. There's a lot of vessels right there. To be honest, none of these vessels I really want to cannulate because they're small. They're sitting by nerves, which are these honeycomb structures that are sitting adjacent to the veins. They have what's called anisotropy. When you rock the probe back and forth, they change in brightness. And that's characteristic of a nerve. The other thing too is, oftentimes there's arteries that run inside here too. So I can show you an artery right here. It might be hard to see because sometimes they're hiding, but you see some pulsatility when I compress. If I were to take the color you would see a vein. And then you would see an artery in the center of that color flow. So this is some place I would not want to perform peripheral IV. Back to 2D. Now, the other place is the deep brachial. The deep brachial kind of runs medial and in the upper arm. This is also a place you can cannulate, but once again, it's sort of in the upper arm, it runs with nerves, and typically the deep brachial is harder to cannulate just based upon body positioning and how you can cannulate that vein. So, the last place I look is the vein as well that runs in the forearm. But the one I really like and what I identified first and foremost was this vein and the upper lateral aspect of the arm. I have the patient rotate their arm if they can so I can get better visualization and we can really zoom in on this vein. And it's very superficial. We track it proximal and distal following where that vein goes. Where is the best place we can put a peripheral IV? And look at that. It goes pretty, pretty linear. It does curve a little bit, I'm not gonna lie, but it's nice and linear most of the time. So what I wanna do is I wanna choose right here to cannulate. I know it's a vein, right? Because I push down and it easily compresses. It is a thin walled, so this is my vein. So next what I do is I'm gonna optimize my depth, go as shallow as possible, to make that lumen as big as possible, I'm gonna center it, okay? So I see how it goes nice and linear there, okay? Next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remember where that is because now I'm gonna get set up sterilely. So, first and foremost, I'm gonna wipe off the gel that I previously had on there. We're always gonna put a tegaderm on our probe. Some people use a ultrasound cover, but I found that Tegaderm works just as effective. So we've done that. Let's set the probe here. Using Chloroprep, 
We're going to clean the affected area. Okay. Then we're going to administer sterile gel. Okay. Now, for the peripheral IV, typically you're going to use a 20 or an 18 gauge, and you want to use the longest needle you can. Oftentimes they're stocked in emergency departments for this perfect scenario. The reason you need to use a longer angiocath is the veins are slightly deeper. So you'll need to go slightly more into the skin and then to cannulate into the vein more with a longer angiocath. What I do before we start is to put on the center line, which actually runs in the middle of the pal. This can be done by clicking here and then here. So the middle of the screen is now the middle of my probe. Okay, back to finding that vein. And so this is the vein we're gonna choose right there. Once again, it runs fairly linear, it's compressible, and it's not adjacent to any arteries. Okay, so we have a long angiocath. We stabilize our non-dominant hand on the patient's body, and we alert them that there will be a small prick to insert the catheter. All right, there's two hand motions you can do. One is a dart method, or one is much like nurses do, kind of pinching in the angiocath like so. I typically like to do dart method, unless it's extremely superficial. This vein is sort of middling, so I'll start with the dart and see how we do. Okay, so we have our vein in the middle of the screen with our center line. We have our long bore angiocath. And we tell the patient we're gonna make a small prick. And you see the tenting of the skin right over, which is what we wanna see. And slowly advance. And you see the needle tip going right on top of that vein, okay? And slowly advance. Slowly advance the angiocath and the needle. See the tip right on top of that vein. That's what you want to see. And slowly advance until you feel it release pressure or you can visually see the IV in the vein. Advance. and advance. And you see the tip just on top, just on top. See the tip right there, see that? Right in the lumen. Boom. I should be getting flash any time. Drop my hand a little bit. See, that's the lumen and the tip right there. See that? And I'm getting flash now, which tells me I'm in the vein. What we want to do is we want to slowly march. We want to slowly march that angiocath, that makes sense. Slowly up in to the vein to make sure it stays in the lumen and that we have enough of the needle in the vein to make sure it stays. Typically what I do is I drop my hand a bit, drop my hand, and slowly advance. Slowly advance and slowly march. Slowly advance and slowly march until you cannulate the vein. We have excellent flash. I drop my hand now and then I thread the angiocath. And we're all done. We secure the line like we do any other peripheral IV with normal tubing, and we put a tegaderm, and then we're all done. Ultrasound can help establish a peripheral IV when no one else can. The veins are too deep to get superficially, and it can really help a person out and save a central line or a pick line or frequent attempts. Thank you. <laughs>